Recently, I've watched the TV series Squid Game, and whilst I rarely watch many movies or series in general, this one has really, really hit hard. So hard that I decided to recreate one of the games from the show only partway through the first episode. In this video, I'll show you the steps that went into recreating the red light green light game from the Squid Game series. As a quick insert here, I know that this is really late to the party, but I've only had about an hour or two per week to create this in the last couple of weeks. On that note, if this turns out to be popular and I get a little bit more free time in the near future, I'd like to add network play and potentially add more of the games into the final project. But for now, I hope that you enjoy my take on red light, green light. To begin, I created a blank project and needed some assets to get going. I started by going to the add input button add feature pack and chose the third person template content. I kid of course, we won't be using Manny here. I've recently released a full featured channel mascot character. You can download Devi on itch as I did here. With the project downloaded, I was able to migrate all of the important content across, which provided a rigged and animated character ready to start using in the game. That allowed me to jump straight into laying out the main map. Just to note here that I will be taking some artistic liberty with almost everything in this project aka keeping it simple. The first thing I wanted was to consider the player's time and how repetitive the game could potentially be, so I've purposely implemented the level to be fairly short to keep each run at around about 60 seconds. Next I started on the game manager class, created a simple timer widget made for that 3D and added this to the level. Whilst doing this I provided a start game cooldown so that the players cannot move for the first few seconds. This will later be accounted for in the AI classes. To wrap the visuals of the game manager, I created a new version of the female Devi model to represent the doll. Separating the head allows me to easily rotate the head separate from the body without a skeletal mesh animation. The doll was scaled in Blender to create the height difference between the standard character meshes. Again, artistic liberties were taken here. I added the doll to the game manager class to stand in front of the timer and then added the two lights either side to help clearly visualize the swap between the red and the green light and when the player should stop. When I was implementing this logic to randomize the time between the doll turning around I realized that following the show like for like would turn this into a very easy game to predict. Even when speeding up the song most people will either stop early in the song or at the specific point before it stops playing. Instead I've opted to toggle the lights first and then provide a small window during the doll's head rotation before everyone then needs to stop. This should make the player focus more on visual cues and really test their reaction times and if they want to get to the end quickly. To handle the level bounds, I created a simple game bounds class to check if a character had entered or exited the play zone, which is the section in the middle. I did this by exposing a boolean to the editor and running a simple check when an actor passes through the bounds and communicating through an interface class. I place one of these by the start point and tick this to be the entrance and one near the end and untick that one. Then in the player class if the character has entered the arena, a check will be made to find out if the game manager has turned red and if we're moving. If so, the character will be killed. These checks are all made on the event tick but to keep the performance hit down, everything is very reactive utilizing interfaces for communication, meaning that the game manager will only need to send out one message when the light changes and the character classes only need to check a locally held variable on the tick. This should also transfer nicely over to the AI classes which will likely end up being a derived class from the player character. The results at this stage remove the input from the player when moving during the red light. A little bit of ragdoll was added here because ragdoll is cool. One thing I did find here is that it's really easy to stop quickly even from a sprint leading to a very little challenge. To make the player think a little bit more about how long they should be sprinting and to balance their movement with their reaction, I reduced the braking and ground friction on the character movement component, adding a slippery feel to the character, which in most games would be a bad game mechanic, but in this case, I think it adds a little bit of variation to what would otherwise be a very simple game. Besides introducing opponents, we pretty much have the full game loop, and if the player reaches the exit bounds, then the check for the death is ended and the player is safe. Naturally, that means that the next step will be adding the AI opponents. This was incredibly easy and quick to implement thanks to the considerations that I made previously, that being the sharing of logic that we've already implemented in the player class. Using the generic interface call, the game manager didn't need to add any additional logic to notify either the player or AI class that the game had started, the lights had changed color, or the timer had expired. 
throwing in some very basic logic into a behavior tree to find the distance near the end and only run at the correct time, either when the game has started and when the light is green and throwing in a nav mesh bind yielded the basic results that we're looking for. The problem here is that the AI movement is all looking very uniform and they have frame accurate reactions to the notifications of the light changing, of course, meaning that they would never be caught out. To address this, I've added some random values for a min and maximum move speed. I've also given each AI a randomized reaction time, which will be used in a calculation to check if they have stopped soon enough. I've then provided them with a randomized confidence modifier. This will be used to decide if they will have the confidence to sprint when the next light turns green. After implementing this, this immediately felt more interesting to play. You can see here that some of the AI will pull away faster with their higher speed, and at different points in the game the confidence kicks in and the AI can be seen sprinting to the goal. As well as forcing some of the AI to be killed due to their slower reactions, I've also implemented a small randomized delay before the die function is called so that it looks like the shots are fired at different points rather than having all of the AI drop at once. That just left one thing, the best thing, that is the polish path. I started with the obvious, which were the visuals, adding in particle effects when someone was shot, a decal surrounding their corpse for a pool of blood, and it's a little bit difficult here to see, but a decal will also appear at a point on their body or head to indicate where the character was hit. I've added some logic to swap the mesh at random on the construction script to swap the skeletal mesh between the male and female version based on a random boolean. For the audio, I've used several feet on sand effects combined to a cue to randomize which one is played with a slight pitch offset. Added in the rotation noise to the head turning and gunshots each time a character is killed. I've implemented a widget to count down before the game started and another when the game ends, which will display whether you've won or lost. And this provides the option to replay or quit. I then added a little bit of juice to the widget with a simple animation and I finished off by implementing a slow-mo effect during the game over. For the very final touches I opened Affinity Designer and using a reference for scale I recreated a vectorized version of the Squid Game logo which was then added to the floor as a decal. I've implemented some basic post-process effects and exponential height fog and although I didn't want to use the song as part of the game loop, the game was still feeling a little bit flat at this point. This was rectified by the inclusion of a really great remix by Ramesses B, simply named Squid Game. With the final artistic liberty being taken here and using all of my artistic skill, I changed the color of the characters to match the tracksuits used in the series. And that's a wrap. You can download and play the game free on itch.io in the link below. Also remember that you can download the Devi characters used here for use in your own projects. They come with a full slew of animations, including jump, double jump, and even a wall slide. They're intended to be customized and repurposed. So if you download it and you can somehow make something better or more artistic than the changes that I've made here, then be sure to return and let me know.